Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the so-called dark stars. These stars that are maintained by the presence of dark matter. Let's talk a little bit more about this hypothetical concept and welcome to What the Math. Now, first of all, I've, I was actually trying to recreate what a dark star might look like, and this is the best that I could come up with. Except that it's very likely completely wrong. It just is a very dark star, but it looked nothing like this. If we uh, talk about the idea that I'm going to be presenting today based on several papers. And although there are quite a lot of various dark stars out there, specifically, for example, this right here, this is a brown dwarf, a star that's um, just dark and doesn't produce enough light, this is not really the type of a dark star we're talking about. We're going to be talking about stars that are dependent on dark matter, and this of course assumes that we believe dark matter exists. So could these so-called dark matter stars exist? Well, at least one scientist out there thinks that yes, they can, or at least they could have in the early existence of the universe. Specifically, within only um, a few million years after the Big Bang, when the universe was very, very dense, very hot, and no actual star could exist just yet, this particular scientist, Catherine Fries, whose paper you can find in the description below, believes that these types of stars um, could have been a reality and they could also solve a very important mystery of the existence and the creation of the supermassive black holes, whose um, actual origin is still a mystery. There's at least one paper that came out in 2019 that does try to explain this mathematically, but not everyone agreed with this paper and it's also very very vague and um, trying to help us actually get the grasp on how it may have happened in reality. This paper, however, the one on dark stars, does give us a very interesting scenario on the creation of these beautiful giants. Now, first of all, why is it even a mystery? Why do we not understand how supermassive black holes may have been created? And to answer this is, well, it's basically their mass. Like, for example, this one right here, Sagittarius A star, in the middle of our own galaxy, is about 4.3 million masses of the sun. And that's a huge, huge giant. It's just kind of difficult to imagine how such a tremendously large object could have formed in 13.8 billion years of the existence of the universe. And even though maybe this one we can kind of explain, some of the larger ones, like the one we all know by now, the M87 black hole, also known as Puehi, the existence of this black hole that's basically billions masses of the sun is very difficult to explain. How was it formed? How can it possibly exist in such a short period of time? And so this is kind of where we come to this unusual idea of dark stars or dark matter stars if you want to call them that way. Basically imagine the world as it was only a few million years after the Big Bang. The universe is super super hot, there's a lot of really dense hot matter and these stars just cannot possibly form yet, it's just way too hot for them. And so in this particular environment the dark matter dominates and it starts kind of combining into chunks and attracting other matter. Now, as it does so, it starts creating these relatively dark objects that soon attract more and more hydrogen and create these um, very vague, very fuzzy clouds around them that sort of resemble a star but are not as dense as a typical star. Basically, this is a world where you have dark matter in the middle surrounded by hydrogen, we're talking about the really early hydrogen, that creates this very unusual star-like object. And then, because dark matter accumulates, it starts to um, interact with each other and annihilate each other. Basically, two dark matter particles that we usually refer to as WIMPs, or weakly interacting massive particles, sort of annihilate each other with, through collision, which of course releases a tremendous amount of energy and um, allows for the star to exist and to not collapse and um, destroy itself. In other words, we now have a very interesting structure with dark matter in the middle surrounded by the star material surrounded by hydrogen. And this star, because it's generating energy based on the annihilation of dark matter, starts to kind of shine. It starts to produce energy. As a matter of fact, it even becomes visible. Its temperature, according to the paper, is roughly around 9000 to 10,000 degrees Celsius. So instead of looking like this, like a dark star, it actually starts looking like this. 
basically sort of similar to our own sun. And this is a huge star. It's also very, very bright. It's possibly 10 to um, even 100 billion times brighter than our own sun. And its size, um, according to the estimates from this paper, is roughly around 10 astronomical units. Now, just to give you a comparison here, Earth is here, this is the sun, this is one astronomical unit. We now are going to change this into an object that would be a dark star. So once we change its radius, it becomes a tremendously large object that engulfs um, a lot of objects, a lot of planets, and only, I think, Saturn is a survivor here, because even Jupiter has fallen into this object. So this tremendously large, very, very bright, and also somewhat massive object does have a tiny uh, amount of dark matter on the inside that's making all of this happen. And essentially what you're looking at is basically just a hydrogen cloud, not very dense hydrogen cloud, with uh, approximately 0.1% of dark matter by mass on the inside that's producing all of this energy. And then we have all of this hydrogen that slowly starts growing in size, creates more and more mass, and eventually might even result in an object that's million masses of the sun. So this could be a tremendously massive dark star. And it will exist just fine. It's actually uh, mathematically totally possible for it to exist relatively untouched by anything for a really long time. But then, of course, something happens. And our universe starts transforming from a very dense, very hot place to a lot more cooler and a lot less dense and eventually becomes what we have today. Basically, the entire universe is filled with relatively cold space. And as all of this cools down, the uh, star itself starts collapsing because the dark matter that was within it is no longer able to maintain um, its reaction and doesn't really produce any more energy. So this whole thing suddenly collapses into basically an ultra-massive black hole or a supermassive black hole, very similar to the one in the middle of the Milky Way, uh, known as Sagittarius A star. But despite this very brilliant explanation, all of this of course depends on the idea of dark matter being real and WIMPs being the major component of this dark matter. In other words, it needs to have these unusual particles that we still haven't discovered that would create this energy. And um, even though technically it's a very brilliant, very beautiful explanation, there's a very, very high chance we're not going to be able to solve this anytime soon. Um, as a matter of fact, um, the scientists behind this paper speculates that with James Webb Telescope, we might be able to even see one of these dark stars, but it's very difficult. It's going to be extremely challenging. So what exactly uh, does this involve? Well, first of all, we would need James Webb Telescope to look back in time, to look at the universe as it was billions and billions of years ago, only a few million years after the Big Bang. And if in that particular environment we actually do see something unusual, something really bright, yet something that's not too hot, maybe about 9000 to 10,000 degrees, in other words, as these scientists refer to it, kind of cool but bright, in that case we'll know almost for sure that this is probably a dark star we're looking at, and also this is probably a uh, star that's about to become a tremendously massive, supermassive black hole that will probably then uh, become part of a galaxy somewhere out there. Now, we're still really, really far from seeing these objects, and even with James Webb Telescope, it's going to take a while before we can see this, because if you remember, the Hubble image that we explored in one of the previous videos took several years to produce. Basically, it was a very, 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 very long exposure, looking at the same spot for a very long time. So, um, James Webb will have to do the same to try to see the most distant parts of the universe and to then try to see these unusual dark stars that might be out there. So, there's going to be only two possible resolutions. Either we see these strange dark stars and can then conclude that it's very likely that dark matter uh, is probably real, supermassive black holes were probably made from these dark stars, and at the same time, WIMPs are out there and are uh, responsible for pretty much most of the interaction of dark matter we see today, or we'll see nothing and then we're back to trying to understand our universe from scratch. Now on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out some of the papers that I mentioned in this video in the description below and subscribe if you still haven't.
Share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space in the universe and wants to know more about everything around us and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. But anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye bye.